Hey guys, and welcome to season two of Cooking with Remy. Let's get cooking. Hi guys, I've missed you so, so much. I hope you had a wonderful holiday season and we are kicking off season two of Cooking with Remy with something easy, simple, actually something that a lot of you guys have asked for. Today we are channeling our inner Rachel Ray with easy, healthy 30 minute meals. These are perfect if maybe you set a New Year's resolution to you know, be on your health grind. These are great if you are back to work and you've got a crazy schedule, they're perfect for you. They are delicious and hearty and comforting and all the amazing things. First off, we are starting off with actually one of my favorite recipes when I started my initial health journey. They are easy and delicious and perfect if you haven't air fryer or you can just use your oven of course we are making coconut chicken tenders and sweet potato fries so they are crispy and sweet and delicious they're also great if you want to do coconut shrimp coconut tofu whatever it is but I am a fan of coconut chicken so that's what we're doing today then if you've been watching the vlogs you know how obsessed I have been recently my whole life, but also just more recently with wonton soup. This is perfect if you're living in a colder climate or even if you are like myself in LA, those cold mornings, all I want is a delicious warm bowl of soup. So this is really great. It's chuck full of vegetables and little wontons, some protein, everything like that. It's basically like a clean out your fridge kind of soup. So it's one of those amazing recipes for that. And last but not least, I'm showing you a really easy take on a Chipotle inspired bowl. So we're just gonna make a bunch of ingredients. They're great if you want a meal prep or if you've got a crazy schedule, keep it in your fridge fridge, throw it in a bowl, and you've got dinner or lunch or whatever it is that you're making right on the table. So let's get cooking. All right, we're gonna begin with our coconut chicken tenders. Now, if you've watched my vlogs for a while, you know this is a recipe that I go to all the time. I'm doing my little bit of like a healthier version of our breading process. So over here, I have my chicken breast tenders that I have pat dry to get them nice and dry. Normally when you're deep frying something, your breading process starts by dredging something in flour, but I found just to make it a little bit healthier, as long as you get whatever it is that you're gonna air fry really, really dry, everything sticks to it and you can omit that whole flour step. I've got my eggs here and then over here, we're gonna make our coconut mixture. So in my shallow bowl, I'm gonna crack two eggs. And then I personally like to season every layer that we're dipping the chicken into because we want flavorful food. I'm also adding pepper. Just because it's healthy doesn't mean it has to be flavorless. Let's go to Flavor Town. <laughs> I'm gonna add, of course, our holy trinity garlic powder, onion powder, and I love to add paprika for a little color and a little kick. So that's all the egg mixture. Now I'm going to whisk that up, make sure it's all nice and thoroughly combined and clump free. Okay, eggs look perfect. Let's move on to the coconut. All right, now for the coconut, I'm gonna use different variations of coconut. You can just use one. You can also add in panko breadcrumbs if you want. That's also delicious. But I want a lot of coconut flavor, so I'm just gonna do just coconut. I've got a mixture here of very, very, very finely shredded. Make sure you use unsweetened people, please. Unsweetened coconut. And then I'm also gonna add in coconut flakes. So it adds a little bit more texture, a little bit more coconut flavor. And I'm gonna do two parts of the finely shredded to one part of the flakes. So I'm gonna start with one cup of the finely shredded coconut. We can always make more. I usually always need a little bit more breading anyways, but we'll start with this and then half a cup of our coconut flakes. Ooh, that looks good. And like I said, we don't need flavorless food. We're gonna add salt, pepper, and just do our same seasonings over again. All right, you guys know the drill. One hand for wet, one hand for dry. It just makes everything a little easier. We're gonna take our chicken breasts, dip it into the egg, make sure it's well coated, drip off any excess, and then right into our coconut flakes. Just drop her in. I like to sprinkle and then just press, 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 flip her around. Really get into all the nooks and crannies to make it extra crispy. And then continue till we're done with our chicken breasts. Our chicken tenders are in our air fryer basket. I put a spray of avocado oil at the bottom, put the chicken tendies in. Now, I'm gonna spray with a little more avocado oil. This is just going to crisp up the tops. And to give them extra crunch, I'm just gonna sprinkle the tops with a little bit more of our coconut flake mixture. Let them stick on top. Okay, we're gonna air fry these at 370 degrees for about 12 to 15 minutes. I like to flip them halfway through and then our chicken tenders are done. Let's work on our sweet potato fries. All right, now that the air fryer is going and the chicken tenders are cooking, in the meantime, this is a 30 minute meal. We gotta work quickly, people. I've got a 
this sweet potato here, you can use regular potatoes, Japanese sweet potatoes. I've just got ye old orange sweet potato here. I'm just going to chop off the ends and I got a new peeler, you guys. I'll link it down below. This is the best peeler I've ever used. If you watched a Vlogmas, you remember, I almost stole one from the Airbnb because it was that good. I found my own Farberware. I really will link it down below. It's changed my life because normally before, I was cutting my fingers every time I had to peel something. I would go out of my way to not peel things because I was scared of cutting my hands. Look at this. Look at this ease. Wow. You still gotta look though, be safe. <laughs> you can also leave the skin on if you want. I think there's a lot of vitamin A in the skin, I wanna say, we'll fact check that later. But I'm just gonna peel it today. Easy. Now to cut these into fry shapes. You can do wedges, you can do crinkle cut, you can do shoestring, whatever you'd like. I personally am just a fan of a regular old fry shape, but do whatever works for you and just chop them up. It's that simple. All right, our sweet potatoes are in a bowl. I'm gonna add some avocado oil. You can do whatever oil you like, but this has a high smoke point, so it's gonna go well in the air fryer. We've got our salt. You wanna liberally salt these. Our pepper. And then for seasonings, you can do whatever you'd like. You can leave them plain with just salt and pepper, but I love to add flavor to mine, so I've got garlic powder onion powder. I've also got some seasoned salt. It gives a nice sweet salty kick. Obviously some paprika for a little spice. Just a smidge and then also some Italian seasoning. This has like parsley, basil, thyme. Again, just add some more flavor. And then last but not least, I'm gonna add in a little bit more dried basil. I personally like the flavor of basil with sweet potato. And then you just wanna get in there and give these a good mix. Make sure they're all nice and coated. And then once my chicken tenders are done, I'm gonna throw these in the same air fryer basket and cook them for about 10 to 12 minutes at 370 degrees. Just give it a shake every few minutes and then we're good to go. All right guys, in less than 30 minutes, our coconut chicken tenders and sweet potato fries are done. I love to eat mine with a little side of ketchup and for a little garnish, I like to put a little parsley on just for some color and some added flavor. Now for the best part of all, taste test. I'm gonna be honest, I already nibbled on some fries and they are delicious. Good dunk of ketchup. Mmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. They are consistently good every time, I swear. You can eat them on their own, put them on a salad, put them in a taco, do whatever you want. Let's move on to some wonton soup. All right guys, moving on. Gorgeous, gorgeous girls like myself love soup and I am a soup girl if you didn't know. I eat soup I'd say probably mm, once every couple days if not every day because it is like the most comforting thing for me to eat. I'll eat it in the summer, I'll eat it in the winter and one of my absolute favorite types of soups is wonton soup mostly because you can just throw it in a pot and eat it and it's that easy. This is great if you've just got random things in your fridge that you just wanna throw together, throw it in a pot with this broth and you are good to go. So I've got my pot here and I'm gonna start with my base, which is going to be chicken broth. I'm using chicken broth today. You can use vegetable broth. You can make your own chicken broth, but I'm feeling very Sandra Lee semi-homemade in this episode. As I said, everything comes together in 30 minutes or less. And when I make my own chicken broth, it takes hours. So we don't have time for that. So I'm just pouring a whole container of this into my pot. Obviously it's not hot yet. <laughs> you can eat it like this if you'd like. There's nothing wrong with this, but to add like a little bit more flavor, I like to take this, which looks like betta fish food. Yes, it does. This is what I used to feed my betta fish. This is dashi broth and basically just adds like a delicious umami flavor to whatever you add it to. I'll just put this in water and make this sometimes, but I like the flavor that this adds and just like a little bit more depth. So I'm gonna add this in. It smells so good. I add about two teaspoons or so. You can get this at your local Asian market. I found it at Daiso, which is the Japanese dollar store. So look around and you can find it. Or if it's online, I'll link it down below. So I'm gonna add, it literally looks like betta fish food. It smells like it too. Two teaspoons, but it's delicious. I'm gonna put this on the stove and bring it to a boil over medium high heat and we will work on our other ingredients. Now, as I said, you can add whatever you want to the soup. I personally have chicken breast from earlier and also I had some leftover shrimp from a recipe I made the other night, so that's what I'm using in mine. For my chicken, I'm just gonna slice it into thin little strips, and we're just gonna put that into the soup and it's gonna poach in the soup. You know when you order from like a Chinese restaurant and the chicken is all delicious and tender in the soup? That's how you cook it, you just poach it, and that's how it stays nice and tender without getting rubbery. All right, we've got our thin slices of chicken, and then also I already peeled and deveined these shrimps, but these are big boys, so I'm actually just gonna slice them laterally so they're just a little thinner, just like this.
All right, we got our shrimps and our chicken. Let's move on to veggies. For our soup, I'm using mushrooms, carrots, and snap peas. You can use snow peas, whatever you have. I'm also going to go to the garden and grab some bok choy and Chinese cabbage. Again, use whatever you have, but our mushrooms are already pre-sliced. For my carrot, I'm just going to peel it, and I'm slicing them into quarter-inch slices. You want them thin enough that they cook in the soup, but you don't want them too thin that they get mushy. Okay, for our snap peas, I just cut off the ends, and I'm just going to cut these in half just to make them a little bit easier to eat, but that's all you gotta do. Now I'm gonna add in the chicken, the carrots, and the snap peas into my soup. We're starting with these because these take the longest to cook. Be careful in the splash zone. Welcome to our first official Cooking with Remy episode featuring my flourishing garden. It has gotten crazy over here. It's like a little mini jungle. But right now we're gonna pick some bok choy and some cabbage for our soup. All right, here is our bok choy that is absolutely massive. Put her in our little gardening basket, courtesy of Miss Whitney. Here we have Chinese cabbage, which is kind of in the bok choy family. I made that up, but I'm gonna fact check that and I think it's true. <laughs> oh, I think that's good. Also, my broccoli is ready to harvest, so I'm just gonna throw that in the soup too. There we go. Okay, so I like a soup that is full of veggies and just full of things, so I added in all the veggies from the garden. It looks so vibrant and green, and also they're going to dwindle down as they cook, so that's why I put everything in there. We're also gonna add in our shrimps, and those cook so quickly, so you just wanna give it a little stir, as well as a few mushrooms. I'm also gonna add a little more water to just add some more broth to the soup. That looks good, I added about a half cup of water. And last but not least, I'm adding in these Korean frozen wontons or dumplings or whatever you wanna add in. If you're Korean, you always have a random bag of random dumplings or mandu in your freezer, so that's what I'm adding in. You can obviously make them from scratch, but I'm just using frozen ones because it's quicker and easy. Give it another little stir. After about five minutes when the dumplings are cooked through, the shrimp is cooked and all the veggies are nice and soft, you are ready to serve. All right. Our soup is done. I served it in my little glass pot. It smells amazing. No joke, when I get this soup delivered from my local Chinese restaurant, which we love to support, but it can be like 15 to $20 for it. So it's so much better to make it at home, obviously, because you get so much more for your money. And no joke, it comes together so quickly. So obviously we need a taste test. I gotta get a bite with everything in it. It's kind of hard to eat soup on camera, I'm gonna be honest. Mmm, -hmm. so good. Mmm, mmm. The chicken is so tender, I swear you cannot mess it up. It's so juicy and tender. A little bite of shrimp. This legitimately tastes like Chinese delivery, I swear. Make this, let me know how you like it. I promise you're gonna love it. All right, onto our last recipe. If you are someone who is really busy or if you like to meal prep your meals, this is the one for you. Obviously, you can customize this however you like, but this is how I like to eat my Chipotle when I do have it, and this is obviously just a little bit healthier. All right, so we've got my chicken breasts in a bowl. I'm just gonna cook these up. You can cook up as many as you want or as few as you'd like. I've got four, and we're gonna do our normal seasonings again. Salt, pepper, we're gonna do garlic, onion, and paprika, of course. Lots of flavor. And then to add just a little more kick, I'm gonna do some chili powder. This is gonna make them just a little spicy, add a nice little kick. Woo, okay. Then I'm gonna put my glove on and we're gonna massage the seasonings into the chicken. By massaging this in, you're guaranteed to get flavor in every bite. Okay, once our chicken is coated in the seasoning and it's all nice and even, I'm gonna throw this on a pan and just cook them all the way through in a little bit of avocado oil. Woo, listen to that sizzle. All right, I just got everything ready for our bowl. Let me walk you through what I just did. Personally, my favorite thing at Chipotle is the corn salsa, so I made that and it's so easy to do. I started with one can of corn. Now, I would love to use fresh corn right now, but since it's not in season, canned corn will have to do. So I rinsed and drained the can of corn, chopped up about a quarter of a red onion, like a third of a jalapeno, and I make sure to use a glove now when I chop jalapenos because if you guys remember, one time I chopped one and then decided to pick my nose, and it was not a fun experience. Let me clarify, I didn't pick it. I just itched my nose, but the spiciness got all up in my sinuses, that's for sure. I added a small handful of finely chopped cilantro along with the juice of a lime, some salt and pepper, gave it a mix, and we are good to go. Also, I made the famous chipotle lime cilantro rice, which is so easy to do. Basically, I just cooked up one cup of dry jasmine rice, and as we know, that expands, so it's a lot of rice, good for like two to three people. Cooked that up, and then I added in the juice of half a lime, again with some finely chopped cilantro, and then salt and pepper, and we are pretty much up to speed. So I know at Chipotle, if you get a bowl, 
or something like that. They just give you salsa on top, but I'm a sauce queen. I love sauces. So this is my little hack if you want to add like a really spicy, creamy sauce on top. I know a life hack that you can get there is like the sour cream and the red sauce. You make like the creamy, spicy sauce that they have. This is kind of my take on that, but a little bit healthier because instead of sour cream, I am using Greek yogurt. This is my hack for pretty much recreating any sauce at home. If I'm making homemade ranch, I'll use this and some ranch powder. I'll use this in pretty much anything in lieu of sour cream, just because it adds a little bit more protein and I honestly really like the tangy flavor that it gives. So I'm gonna scoop in some Greek yogurt into my bowl. I'm gonna add in about a quarter cup of this. Now to add a little bit of kick to this and to give it that spicy flavor, this is my favorite, one of my favorite hot sauces to ever exist. It's from the brand Siete, which they make the best tortillas, the best sauces, I love them. And this is the habanero one, which has like a creaminess already, if you can see like the texture of it. I'm obsessed with this stuff and it's pretty damn spicy. So I'm gonna add some into my sour cream, just kind of, you know, however spicy you want it. I added in about two tablespoons, which is gonna be pretty spicy, but if you, you know, don't like spice, use less or omit. So then we've got this delicious creamy consistency, but to make it a sauce, I'm gonna thin it out with some water. I'm gonna start with like a tablespoon or so and just keep working it in until it's my desired consistency. I added in about three tablespoons of water and this is my perfect sauce consistency, perfect for drizzling. And now we can assemble our bowl. All right, we're starting with our bowl, adding in some fresh greens from the garden. I love like a salad bowl mixture personally. Going in with our rice over here on this side. Again, this recipe makes a lot, so you can either have lunch for the next few days, you can make lunch for your friends. Oh, that looks so good. Then we've got our chopped chicken over here. This chicken is seriously so juicy and flavorful. Then we've got our corn salsa that we made. I would love to use white corn in this, but since we've got canned corn, we've just got yellow corn here. But any corn works, obviously. I'm also adding some little cherry tomatoes. You can add in pico de gallo or salsa, whatever you'd like, but I love a fresh tomato. Then I'm gonna add in some fresh avocado. You could add guacamole if you'd like, but I love fresh avocado. Drizzle on our dressing sauce mixture all over. Last but not least, just a little bit of black pepper all over, and there is our chipotle bowl. And there you guys have it, homemade chipotle bowls. Seriously, this is my dream chipotle bowl. As you saw, it's so easy to prep, make them throughout the week. It's healthy, it's delicious, and it comes together so quickly. I'm not gonna taste test this because as soon as we're done, I'm flying this up to Cal to eat for lunch. He's very excited about it and already taste tested the rice and said it was delicious. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode of Cooking with Remy. I cannot wait for season two. So many more episodes are coming at you this year, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye!